If you love trying new nail products, this one is going to be for you. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. Today, I'm trying a new nail gel bit. I've seen this bit a bunch all over Instagram on people's reels. It's a flame nail bit. The one that I got was the Pana one in course, and I want to put it up to the test against my ride or die, my Pana safety bit, the one with like the curved smooth top that I'm using. I've been on this kick of trying new nail drill bits to see if anything compares to my absolute favorite ride or die one that I'm going to be using later in this video. I saw this on a couple people's Instagram reels and I asked them and I went over and purchased it off Amazon. And it's also considered a safety bit because it has like that rounded edge. I was really curious how the flame ones would work. I've tried this once before and I wasn't really a big fan but it looked like everybody was removing their gel and builder gel and rubber base so nicely with this. So I thought okay like let me just give this a try and see how it works compared to my normal one. I have a rubber base on all of my nails right now. I'm doing some testing of new rubber bases. I went with my e-file and a typical removal how I would using my other pan up, my other favorite pan a bit. Going first like down the center to get some of the bulk off and then going around the back and the sides of my cuticles to see how it would handle it. And I did it on the same RPMs, like 20 to 22, 25,000 at the most. I have top coat over the rubber base and it started coming off, but I felt like it just wasn't as smooth. I wanted to keep going and see how it would look, but it didn't seem to be pulling it off in the same smoothness as the other bit, the Pana Course safety bit that I use. It felt like it was making divots in my builder in my rubber base. Even though it didn't hurt, it didn't like it didn't burn at all. Typically, like you know, when you're making divots in your nails, that means that you're pressing too hard. It didn't feel like that at all. I was barely pressing. But it definitely didn't seem to e-file off the rubber base like the Pana one. You guys are going to see here, when you look at it, the Pana one, the rubber base or the dip or the builder gel, whatever you're e-filing off, just feels like it's coming off smoother. Even though you can still see like little, I don't know, divots, dips in my nails where, you know, more, more base is coming off in certain areas. It just felt like I was kind of pushing it a little bit harder to get the rubber base off, which I definitely didn't like because I never want to press hard into my nails. I'm always super, super careful about it. I don't want to hurt myself again with an e-file, so I'm always very gentle. At least I try to be. And I jumped back to using my favorite bit. The rubber base started coming off a lot easier and a lot faster. Um, It's not that it wasn't coming off. It came off actually really nicely. It just didn't feel like it came off as evenly. I think it would be awesome if you were taking off just gel, but if you're using a thicker product like rubber base or builder gel, it just was not coming off as easily and as nicely. I used the bit with both my left hand and my right hand. I wanted to make sure I gave it a really fair test. That's something that I always try to do when I'm using new nail products is do it with my right and my left hand because I'm right-handed. So I feel like anytime I do anything with my right hand, there's a little bit of an advantage for whatever the product is because I'm going to be able to apply it easier versus when I'm using my left hand to apply something. I'm not left-handed. So I still think that my left and just takes a little bit longer to learn how to use a tool. After I had a majority of the rubber base off with my regular pan of safety bit, I went back in with the flame bit and took off some of that excess that wasn't quite as even and it worked really well. So I would say that if I'm using the flame bit, I'm going to want to keep it for something like removing gel real quickly and gel just gel polish the dip powder using the flame bit came off a, it took a lot longer to come off than it normally would with my regular pan a bit i wanted to keep going i was not giving up with this bit just because it's not a bad bit it, i can see why people like it if you've been doing your nails for a really long time and you have a lot of skill then that would probably be a great bit because it's really really precise if you're somebody who is not as skilled at using an e-file i still stand by the pan a safety bit like the safety barrel bit that I'm using in course they're both in course so maybe with a flame bit you need to use a bit higher of a grit but I just test out the course because I wanted to see like course bit against course bit and then I ended up I grabbed my other pan and one back a couple times again just because I it was taking a long time and I wanted to do a fill I didn't want to wait any longer it was just taking too long so that's something to consider I know everybody has really specific bits that they like to use on their nails and they find that work for them so for me I think it's going to continue to be this pan of course safety bit like you can watch me use my left hand to remove all the product on my right hand and the rubber base is just like flying off my nails and that's what we want 
When you're using an e-file, you want the product to come off really quickly. If it's coming off really slow, you know you know that either you're not using it correctly, you know you're not doing it in the correct direction, or you don't have it at the high enough speed. That's something that I found over the past couple years, and from watching a ton of nail text videos on using an e-file, if you don't have your product basically like flying off, you're probably not using it fast enough. I know that sounds super scary, okay? Because I was one of those people who was like, mm, I cannot use this. Any faster there's no way I'm going to cut myself so I continued to use it for a while pressing down really hard like thinking that's how it should work and as soon as I finally like got over my fear and started using it faster I thought oh my gosh this is how it was supposed to be the whole time the product is flying off and it has made removal so much easier a couple people have asked me why I like to wear the gloves and I've said this in other videos I want to make sure I keep trying to say it in all my videos I'm wearing the gloves that are cut out because I'm trying to protect my skin from all the product that's getting all over it you can see when you're e-filing that the product just flies everywhere even with a dust collector with a dust collector it's it's a lot better than it would be if I wasn't using one but you still get a lot of product on your skin and I'm trying to minimize the amount of product on my skin no matter what the nail product is whether it's dip or gels builder gel anything I always want the least amount possible on my skin. Once I get the builder gel or rubber gel base filed off my nails, then I can take the gloves off and just finish up the rest of my cuticle prep without the gloves because there's not a ton of product flying all over my skin. I'm really trying to decrease my chances of contact dermatitis. That's something I've learned from watching nail tech educators is you wanna decrease your chances of getting contact dermatitis. I'm not trying to give myself an allergy that I don't have and definitely don't want. If you're somebody who likes to be extra cautious about your nails, then I would recommend getting these gloves. They, I get them off Amazon. I'll make sure I link them in the description. They're just cheap disposable gloves. There's latex, latex free. I pretty much get whatever is on sale and that's what I wear anytime I take off my builder gel and I wear them anytime I do my nails as well with dip powder because the dip powder getting on your skin, that can agitate them as well. I typically only wear my UV gloves when I'm actually using my gels and just keep all the disposable ones for when I'm just putting, when I'm taking off product or applying dip powder. Once I'm done removing all the gel product, I finish up with my cuticle prep using my e-file and then I'm ready to go to start my next mani. If you're still struggling with builder gel and need some help, then check out this next video where we learn all about how to do builder gel. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.